Good afternoon, boys and girls. I think it is time to begin our class. First, let me tell you today's teaching contents. Today, the first part, we will review the contents of the last class. Then, the teacher will tell you abdominal aorta. The last part, I will introduce you the clinical procedure appendectomy. First part, review the contents of your last class. I have two questions. The first one is, what is arterial ligament? The second one, please name the branches originating from the ascending aorta and the aortic arch. Who would like to answer my first question? Please. Arterial ligament is the remnant of the ductus arteriosus and it is located between the aortic arch and that of the pulmonary artery. Thank you. Yeah. The second question, please. Ascending aorta, we have the coronary arteries and then for aortic arch, we have the brachiocephalic trunk the left carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. Thank you, sit down please. Yeah. About the arterial ligament, maybe we need to know more. Yeah. So arterial ligament is also named ligamentum arterial sir. Yes? Yeah. It is a fibrous band connecting two structures. One is bifurcation region of pulmonary trunk. Another structure is aortic arch. Yeah. After birth, oh, I, I need to mention the arterial ligament is the remnant of doctor's anterior cells. After birth, this duct should close, but if it's not close, it will result in a kind of congenital heart disease. The name is yeah, patent ductal arterial cells. So please remember the clinical meanings of their arterial ligament. You can look at this picture. This one is anterior surface of our heart. Yes, you can find this one aortic arch. This one here is the bifurcation region of the pulmonary trunk. So this fibrous band is named arterial ligament. About the branches of ascending aorta, we can you can look at this picture. Here is the ascending aorta, the root region. At the root region, it gives two blood vessels. The right one is the right coronary artery. The left one is the left coronary artery. From the convex surface of the aortic arch, we can find the three branches. From the right to the left, they are bronchiocephalic trunk then left the common carotid artery, then left the subclavian artery. The bronchiocephalic trunk runs superiorly, then divide into the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. So they are branches of ascending aorta and the aortic arch. So please remember these two questions. Then let's move to the abdominal aorta. Look at the picture. Yeah. So these right blood vessels are aortic, uh, are abdominal aorta. About the aorta, I think you have studied. 
it have three parts. The first the part named ascending the altar, then the altic arch, then descending the altar. Descending the altar according to the position can be subdivided in two thoracic altar and the abdominal altar. Yeah. So which structure separates thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity? They are frame. So look at here. So this structure is their frame. Under their frame, we can find the three hiatus. The posterior inferior one is named aortic hiatus. The descending aortic passes through the aortic hiatus, change to their uh, from their thoracic aortic, that change to their abdominal aortic. Located in the abdominal cavity, anterior left to the vertebral column is abdominal aorta. Anterior right to the vertebral column, I mean this one is inferior vena cava. So please remember uh, anterior to the posterior abdominal wall to large blood vessels. The left one is abdominal aorta, the right one is inferior vena cava. Abdominal aorta give a lot of branches. These branches, some of them reach to the abdominal wall, such of them reach to the organs of viscera. So according to the distribution, we divide it the branches of abdominal wall uh, into two different kind. One kind is the branches of abdominal wall. Another kind is the branches of abdominal viscera. Branches of abdominal viscera can be subdivided into paired visceral branches and the unpaired visceral branches. So let's move to the branches of abdominal wall. Look at this picture. Yeah? From superior to inferior, we can find a pair of blood vessels named the inferior phrenic artery. Then at each side, we can find the four pairs blood vessels. They are lumbar arteries. Here, we can find one single blood vessel run inferiorly. It is median sacral artery. The inferior phrenic artery are two small vessels which supply the diaphragm. Yeah, which supply the diaphragm. Then, the lumbar artery uh, located in the lower uh, back or the lumbar region, yeah, they, the number is four pairs. Yeah. They originate from the each side of abdominal aorta. This picture is the half pelvic cavity, right half or left half? Right half, because here is the sacrum. Yes? Yeah. So you can find anterior to the anterior surface of sacrum. Wrong from superior to inferior is a very, very thin blood vessels. It is the median sacral artery. Usually it originates from the posterior surface of abdominal aorta, just the superior to the bifurcation region. Yeah. Superior to the bifurcation region, posterior surface of abdominal archer gave a single branches run inferiorly into the pelvic cavity, anterior to the sacrum. This blood vessel is medium sacral artery. Yeah? Now, let's uh, study the paired visceral branches of the abdominal archer. From superior to inferior, we have the 
this one, we have the middle super renal artery. We have the renal artery and the gonadal artery. Gonadal artery is a general name. In male, it's named the vestibular artery. In female, it's named the ovarian artery. Yeah, ovary artery. Now, look at this picture. Who can tell me this structure is named? Suprarenal gland. How about the shape's suprarenal gland? I mean, two sides have a same shape or different shape. Yeah, you can look at it. Here is the left side suprarenal gland. This one is the right suprarenal gland. They are same shape or different? Difference. The left one is the semilunar in shape. The right one is triangular in shape. Yes? Yeah. So you can find at the middle region, at, I mean, the, the abdominal aorta passes through the aortic hiatus, then give a pair of blood vessels, reach to the middle, uh, middle part of the suprarenal gland. This pair of blood vessels is named the middle suprarenal arteries. It's named the middle suprarenal arteries. That means the suprarenal gland also have the superior and the inferior arteries. Look at this picture, I mean this one. So this blood vessels I have told you, it is the inferior phrenic artery, yeah? The inferior phrenic artery wrong reach to the inferior surface of the diaphragm. Yes, on its way, it gave the inferior branches, the number may be seven. These small blood vessels reach to the superior renal gland. They are superior renal arteries. This blood vessel, I will tell you, it is the renal artery. The renal artery also gave the branches branch run superiorly, reach to the inferior part of the suprarenal gland. This blood vessels is named the inferior suprarenal artery. So each side, the suprarenal artery have three blood vessels, superior, middle, and the inferior suprarenal arteries. Superior renal arteries, the number may be seven, originate from inferior phrenic artery. The middle suprarenal artery originate from abdominal aorta. The inferior suprarenal artery originate from renal artery. So please remember, because the suprarenal gland is a gland, so it have rich blood vessels. Please remember. Then let's move to the renal artery. Renal artery originate from the each side of the abdominal aorta. Yeah, uh, we can find uh, from this picture. Please tell me which side. I mean, left or right side. The renal artery is longer than other side. Which side is longer, right or left? Loudly. Left side renal artery is longer or the right side? Right side, you are right. Just because the abdominal aorta located anterior and the lateral, anterior and the left to the vertebral column. So the right side the renal artery is longer than the left side. Yeah. The renal artery yeah, supply the kidney with blood. Yeah. Look at these pictures. 
Who can tell me the difference these two pictures? Can you tell me the difference of these two pictures? The black and white picture shows the posterior view and the colorful one shows the anterior view. You mean this one is posterior view. view. This one is anterior view. Why? You can tell me. You can differentiate by the position of the aorta and inferior vena cava. It's a very good answer. Yeah, the, the, the girl, the beautiful girl. Yeah, told us this one is a posterior surface just because we uh, uh, there a ulcer, I mean, abdominal ulcer and the inferior vena cava. I mean, she according to the position of the abdominal ulcer and the inferior vena cava. Now, tell us this is the posterior view. Yeah, this one is anterior view. So you can find their. Uh, renal arteries. Yeah. Now let's study uh, a blood vessels, uh, the testicular artery. Yeah, testicular artery is a blood vessels located in female or male. Yeah. Located in male. Yes, <laughs> it's easy to understand. Just because these blood vessels reach to their testes. No, testes. So you can find here is a, 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 a abdominal ulcer. And this side, I think, just to the level of the L2. The testes located long distance from this region. So the blood vessels also need to run long distance to reach the testes. So about this blood vessels, we need to know, not like the renal artery, they need to run long distance reach to the organs. It's visceral artery, just the reach to the organs. Yeah? So it's on its way, it will pass through the deep inguinal ring. Can you remember the deep inguinal ring? The inguinal canal have superficial inguinal ring, the deep inguinal ring. There Testicular artery passes through the deep inguinal ring into the inguinal canal. Out of the superficial inguinal ring, then run inferiorly, reach to the uh, the sacral term. Uh, sacral term. Uh, I give you a picture. Look at here. I think this region is the deep inguinal ring and the passes through the inguinal canal out of from the superficial inguinal ring, then reach to the sacrum. Yeah, you can also find here that this blood vessels reach to the testes is the testicular artery. Yeah. Then let's move to the ovarian artery. Yeah, the female, uh, the gonadal artery is named the ovarian artery. It's also originated from the abdominal ulcer at the level of L2. It also runs long distance from the abdominal cavity into the pelvic cavity. Yeah, into the pelvic cavity. Look at this picture. This one is uterus. Lateral to it, we can find ovarian. Ovarian have two ligaments. One ligament attached to the corner of the uterus. This ligament is a proper ligament of the ovarian. But lateral side, it have another ligament attached to the lateral wall of pelvic cavity. This ligament is named suspensory ligament. The ovary artery passes through the suspensory ligament reach to the ovary. Understand me? Yeah, so please remember gonadal artery is a general name. In male, it's named testicular artery. In female, it's named ovary artery. The blood vessels is very thin, have long distance. In male, passes through the inguinal canal. Yeah, inguinal canal. This one is a true picture. So 
how about uh, these structures, uh, this one. Here is the deep inguinal ring, there testicular artery and also accompany with ring and pass through the deep inguinal ring. And this region is the ovary and the blood vessels from this region, I mean suspensory ligament, reach to the ovary. How about this organ? The uterus. Anterior to it, uh, this one is urinary bladder, urinary bladder. Now let's move to the unpaired visceral branches. Uh, the unpaired visceral branches include the celiac trunk, this one. The superior mesenteric artery is located here, and the inferior mesenteric artery. Yeah. The celiac trunk have three branches. They are left gastric artery, common hepatic artery, and the splenic artery. Please look at this picture now. So here represent the celiac trunk. The celiac trunk is a short blood vessel. It originates at the beginning part of the abdominal aorta. It's about 1.25 centimeter. Please look at this picture. You can find here it is the celiac trunk. And then it divided into this one, left gastric artery. And uh, this one uh, uh, is the splenic artery. And here it is the common hepatic artery. About the common hepatic artery is also a short blood vessels. Uh, it's also a short blood vessel supply blood to the liver to the pylorous part of the stomach and also the duodenum and the pancreas. Yeah. It gives the following branches. The proper hepatic artery, the gastroduodenal artery, and the right gastric artery. The right gastric artery is easily understood just to supply the blood to the stomach. The gastroduodenal artery gives the blood not only the stomach but also the duodenum. Yeah. The hepatic artery gives the blood to the gallbladder and the liver. Look at this picture. So here is the celiac trunk. Then this part represents the common hepatic artery. Yeah. Superiorly, it gives the left and the right, left and the right hepatic artery. Originated from the right hepatic artery, we can find the cystic artery. It reaches to the gallbladder. And also the common hepatic artery gave this one, uh, uh, gave this one reach to the stomach. The name is the right gastric artery. And inferiorly, the common hepatic artery gave the name it the gastroduodenal artery. Then about the left gastric artery. Yeah. Uh, the left gastric artery originated from the celiac trunk, then reach to the, from the superior to the inferior the, uh, along the lesser curvature of the stomach. Yeah. At the middle region, the left and the right gastric artery joined together, I mean anastomosis. Yes. Uh, this picture also, yeah, here it is the left gastric artery. Now, this picture just lifts the stomach superiorly. This is lordly pancreas. Yeah, we can find the head, the neck, the body, and the tail. 
Yes, there are four parts of the pancreas. So superior to their pancreas, we can find the blood vessel. It's also the branches of their uh, celiac trunk. This one is their splenic artery. Yeah. So you can remember the celiac trunk. Yeah, this one. Now, originate to the aorta. Now, continuously divided into this one. Left gastric artery, this one splenic artery, and this one is common hepatic artery. Yeah, three large branches of the celiac trunk. Yeah. How about these blood vessels? This one. The name is cystic artery. It originates from. Left or right? Right hepatic artery. So please remember the right hepatic artery is the branches of the proper hepatic artery. Yes, it gives a branches to gallbladder. The name is the cystic artery. Now let's look at the superior mesenteric artery. The doctor usually name it the SMA. So in the future, when you finish your internship in hospital, the doctor mentioned their uh, SMA. You should remember, oh, it is their superior mesenteric artery. Superior mesenteric artery originates from the anterior surface of their abdominal aorta. Yeah. Uh, it supplies their intestine, their denim, Transverse colon and the pancreas. Yeah. It gives the following branches. They are inferior pancreatic duodenal artery, the intestinal artery, ileal colic artery, the right colic artery, and the middle colic artery. Uh, please look at this picture. This one is a superior mesenteric artery. From its Left side, it gave maybe the, the, the number maybe 15 intestinal arteries. From the right side, inferior to superior, this one is ileal colic artery. The terminal branches reach to the vermiform appendix. The name is articular vermiform artery. Then this one is right colic artery and here is the middle colic artery yeah they are branches of superior mesenteric artery the inferior mesenteric artery is the last unpaired visceral branches of the abdominal aorta yeah it uh, originate from the abdominal aorta inferior, I mean below the renal artery. It supplies the uh, large intestine, the left colic uh, fissure, and also the rupture. It gives the following branches, the left colic artery, the sigmoid branches, and also superior recti rectal artery. So please remember the superior rectal artery is the branches of the inferior mesenteric artery. Now, pass through this picture help you to remember. Now, when we move the small intestine to the right side, we can find this one, there, this one, the inferior mesenteric artery. So you can find the intestine now to the right side. Now it gives the, this one, the left colic artery. Here, now the number may be four, the sigmoid arteries. And this one is superior rectal artery. So up to now, I finish the branches of your abdominal aorta. 
the last part about today's lecture is the clinical exercise uh, uh, appendectomy. That means operation on vermiform appendix. Uh, I think up to today, you have a lot, a lot of knowledge about the vermiform appendix. You know the shape of the vermiform appendix. You know five different positions of the appendix. You also know the McBurney's point and the, how to find how, uh, the appendix during the operation. This knowledge is important for appendectomy. Yeah. So maybe you can answer these questions. Uh, who like answer the first the question? What is the shape of the vermiform appendix? Okay. The vermiform appendix uh, is a worm-like projection from the the posterior medial cecum, which is just inferior to the ileocecal junction. Uh, and so that is the vermiform. Thank you. How about the five different positions of the appendix? Please. The five positions of the vermiform appendix are the postilial, preilial, pelvic, um, subsecal, and retrocecal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Who can help us to find the McBurney's point? Please. The base of the vermiform appendix lies on a point on an imaginary line, joining the obliquus to the anterior superior iliac spine, and one third of that line to the right marks the McBurney's point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the right anterior superior iliac spine. Yes. Yeah. The last the question. Yeah. How to find appendix during your operation? I mean, appendectomy. Please. Uh, you can find the appendix during appendectomy by tracing the tiny coli on the cecum downwards towards the appendix. Thank you. Thank you so much. I like your voice. Yeah. I have a kiss about the appendectomy. Maybe you can, uh, students can read it and help others to understand. So please read the first the paragraph about the scenery. A patient is carried into the emergency room on a stretcher in a position with the knees drawn up and hips flexed. The patient complains of pain localized to the lower right quadrant of the abdomen and his holding posture to reduce movement and associated pain. When your classmate read these words, do you have a picture in your brain? Yeah, a patient which kind of situation. Yeah. Then about their diagnose, diagnosis. You conduct a surface examination of the abdomen, observing rebound tenderness when the abdomen is pressed and localization of pain at the lo lower right quadrant is typical of classically presenting acute appendices. Thank you. The third part is the clinical exercise appendectomy. I think I don't have the time to explain it for you today. So I think I can give you the PowerPoint. You can study by yourself. Yeah. Uh, I think next time, if you have questions, we can communicate each other. But please remember study it. It's very useful for you to be a qualified doctor. Uh, at the same time, I think it's interesting. It is a case. You can find their student's situation. You can give their diagnosis. And you can study how to do the operation on your vermiform appendix. The class is over. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.